Right, thank you very much, John. Um, so now I'm going to talk through and discuss what we're doing in the um, Greater South East. So if you could just have the next slide, please, Alex. So, um, yeah, as you can, this gives an, an overview of um, the geographical area that we cover in the Greater South East. So, as you can see, it's quite a large area. So, we've got all the, the way up to East Anglia, across to um, Oxfordshire, and down to Apshire, then across to Kent, then we've got London in the middle of it. Um, I'm one of four different energy project managers that covers um, this this whole area, and I cover the southwest corner of the Greater South East. So, I cover the, the north part of Hampshire, which falls under the Enterprise M3 um, LEP as well as the west of Surrey and I also cover Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire and Berkshire as well and one of my colleagues um, John Taylor was also on this um, on this call um, he covers um, Kent, Surrey and Sussex so the coast of capital and South East LEP um, so that's kind of how we um, so we divide it geographically um, but then we also kind of support each other across the whole of the greater South East region in terms of um, you know different different projects that, that we're engaging with, um, in addition to the four of us energy project managers, we've also got a hub support coordinator, as well as a data and information manager, and um, it's the old Great South East Energy Hub is then headed up by our own region hub, hub manager Maxine. So there's a team of um, seven of us at the moment. So we'll be over the next slide, please, Alex. So um, yeah, it's quite a large region, as you can see um, from that previous slide. And uh, we've got um, 146 different local authorities in this region. And um, this is to kind of give an overview, really, of the sort of pipeline that we've developed um, so far in the, in the, in the Greater Southeast. Um, we get a lot of different project requests through. Um, and we prioritise these based on how the hub can support. So the prioritise it. Prioritization is based on the, you know, whether the project's scalable, whether it's replicable, and also the value of the project in terms of the size of the project um, from an energy perspective, um, the, the potential carbon savings um, that can be generated from it as well. Um, so in addition to these different projects that we've supported, um, we've also commissioned two local authority guides as well. So one that we did through um, Pins of Masons, and that offers legal advice around the options available to local authorities for clean local energy procurement. And then we had another one which was done by Cornwall Insight, and that provides a summary of options available to local authorities to buy or produce their own clean energy. Um, and all of this work was was kind of, was based on the, the, the need really that was identified from the discussions um, and engagement that we've done with um, the, 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 the local authorities in our area. But then in, in, in addition to that, we've also um, put together a number of specialist hub guides, um, which are all on our website. So I can send the links um, to this as well if anybody is interested in finding out more. Um, this includes areas such as looking at electric vehicles, low carbon heat, um, planning issues, um, grid constraints, as well as and sort of general overview of energy efficiency, as well as actual specific case studies that we've supported um, as, as well so far, and other good practice examples of projects that we feel you know, are, are useful for um, local authorities and other stakeholders um, to, to find out more about. Um, and what, what we try to do as well within our approach is that we're, we're very keen to try and share learning. So making sure that, you know, if there's something that's worked really well in one um, area that one local authority is doing or other public sector organisation, we try to put those in touch with other ones that are trying to develop similar initiatives so that they can um, share that learning from each other. Equally, if there's two different authorities or more authorities trying to do the same thing um, in different geographical areas, we try to join up that to really sh share the learning as well as sort of try to um, work and, and establish more closer working relationships between the local enterprise partnerships and um, local authorities as well. And also within different local authorities at a county, um, a district and borough and parish council level. So um, yeah, there's quite a lot of activity that we're doing um, that, that focuses around that. Um, and as you can see through the list here, yeah, we've, we've got like over eight to five projects in our long list and we've shortlisted 57 of those which we're supporting on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, so within the Greater South East, we've got um, a, a pipeline of around 478 million in value. 
and I'll talk in a bit more detail shortly about the types of projects that we're supporting. Um, but similar to some of those which um, John's mentioned in the southwest, and um, these also reflect what other hubs are doing as well. Um, so there's quite a few solar car parks, um, similar to what John talked about as well. Um, we're looking at sort of um, heat network innovation through the work we're doing with Bayes on, on specific projects. Um, also some projects focusing around um, sort of new and emerging technologies, including hydrogen. Um, and then we're also funding um, to sort of local authority feasibility studies. So as John mentioned as well, there's a discretionary budget that we have for projects that we can put into actually getting those to an investment ready stage, particularly at the moment, but we're trying to focus that on where there's an opportunity with um, post um, COVID economic recovery as well. So there's two feasibilities we're funding under that at the moment. One is a smart grid in Colchester and another is um, a zero carbon um, energy zone project in um, Stone Market. So can I have the next um, slide, please? And this is just zooming into our pipeline in a little bit more detail and um, to show really how the types of projects that we're supporting are broken down. And also with emphasis on the projects that we've shortlisted and prioritised, because as mentioned, this is largely based on the scalability and replicability, as well as the size and scale and potential for carbon savings. Um, so, as mentioned, there's quite a few of those projects. Uh, if, if you see there, a lot of it is very much been focused around power generation. Um, what we've got within the energy hub, um, we've got a number of solar calculation tools that we can use to support local authorities in terms of doing initial assessments for solar PV, um, for example. So, we've been doing a lot of assessments for um, looking at solar farms on ex-landfill sites, as well as looking at solar car parks, as mentioned earlier, and also looking at specific buildings that local authorities have got where there could be potential for solar rooftop um, installations as well. Um, and we've also just been doing a lot of work generally in terms of looking at energy efficiency potential within um, local authority buildings, as well as new um, sort of building developments as well. And one thing that the hub um, does is able to do as well is particularly where there's new large-scale developments happening we can sort of act as a critical friend um, in terms of looking at specific energy strategies for those and being able to advise on any sort of issues or opportunities that, that local authorities and other um, stakeholders need to flag up around those and um, yeah come to the next um, slide please so yeah, I'm just going to give a quick overview of um, some of the projects that we are working on um, supporting at the moment. Um, just, just, and we've tried to focus some of these examples as well of ones that are in the sort of future south geographical area as well. Um, so this is a project that we're doing in Canterbury. Um, it's a green hydrogen facility that's been developed with an 8.8 .8 megawatt electrolyzer. And this has all been connected to um, an offshore wind farm as well. Um, and it's one where there's been um, where, where there's been sort of financial support from the southeast left to actually help to drive that forward. And can the next one, please? Um, and this is a project that we're working with um, Ada and Worthing Council on, and it's looking at a heat network within the civic quarter within Worthing Town Centre. And this whole project is looking at, uh, it's based around a proposal for a one megawatt wastewater source heat pump. So really using um, any heat generated from um, the, 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 sewage net, the, the sewer network within that area. Um, and on, on the back of this, pending um, how this project develops, is potential for this to supply Worthing Town Hall and other neighbouring civic buildings with a source of low carbon heat. Um, and we anticipate that you know, this project's worth about 4.3 million in terms of you know, the first phase of this. Um, the Energy Hub, we're supporting this with um, some funding to actually do some initial feasibility to review the sewer heat capacity, um, hopefully to enable an application through the heat network um, innovation uh, infrastructure and partnership funding. And have the next slide, please. And this is a project um, that we are um, working with Central Bedfordshire Council on. Um, in actually developing a super grid transformer in, in the Biggles Wade area. Um, so this is one more focused in the east of England. Um, so we're working with um, Central Bedfordshire Council just to examine the difficulties they're having coming across 
in the whole journey in terms of developing this um, transformer because one of the issues that we've encountered in terms of what's actually stored in a lot of projects is around existing grid capacity so we work very closely with um, the distribution network operators so um, through Alex and his colleagues at SSEN for example we've got a very good close work, working relationship as well as with the other DNOs including UK power networks um, and we try to sort of work with those to try and alleviate you know the, the issues in terms of grid capacity and hence why we're looking at a lot of renewable energy projects looking at local generation and battery storage as a way of um, easing those constraints on the grid as well um, so really you know we're trying to sort of examine you know any sort of difficulties and issues with view to if any other future projects like this arise we can potentially um, you know share the learning from that and, and, and take that forward as well and um, yeah, the next slide, please. So this is a um, solar farm within Luton um, that we are um, working the proposal for. And the, there's a potential list to supply both like Luton Borough Council um, as, in terms of their own estate, as well as a Vauxhall car plant nearby and also Luton Airport. And the Energy Hub as well in terms of what specific support we're we're offering around this is helping um, Luton Borough Council to look at different investment models um, in, in terms of how they how they can move this, this project forward to a um, investment ready stage. And um, yeah, next slide, please. So here, um, this is to give an example. So John um, spoke around the Rural Community Energy Fund that we're administering. So very much like the Southwest, um, there's a number of projects that we've supported through this. So this gives an example of these projects. So um, we funded um, the feasibility study um, for a solar farm in Berkshire um, on 20 acres of our land that's owned by allotment charity. Um, we're also working um, I'm looking at the viability for affordable renewable heating in some rural properties within East Sussex. Um, and there's also, um, some of you may have come across or heard of the project called Riding Sunbeams, which has been delivered um, with Community Energy South. And one of the projects that we funded as a development project under the Rural Community Energy Fund um, is, look, is around the studies and land agreements and the connection points for a potential four megawatt solar array um, to power the railway. So yeah, the Riding Sunbeams project, you may have, as I said, you may have come across. This is um, around the, the opportunities for solar farms to be able to power um, the um, electric railways. Um, there's been a test site that's been in operation in um, Aldershot and there's a number of other sites that's been earmarked and identified. So um, one of these, uh, we're pleased to say that we're able to sort of support through the Rural Community Energy Fund in terms of examining the um, opportunities and options around that. Um, and also just as another example of village in East Sussex um, near Brighton where we're uh, looking at the feasibility of trans transitioning the village from oil to renewable heating through an actual um, local heat network in that village using heat from um, ground source heat pumps. So a few different projects there and very much like um, as John mentioned for the Southwest Hub, um, we were able to fund up to 40k for feasibility grants under the Rural Community Energy Fund and also a further 100k for um, if the project's much further advanced and it's looking for development funding to support it. And um, yeah, we're still you know, taking applications for this as well. So, um, and, and I can circulate specific links for any projects that fall under um, rural areas um, within the Greater Southeast Energy Hub area for anyone that's interested. And um, yeah, next slide, please. So here are just some examples of other projects that we're supporting, particularly again in the Future South area. Um, so as you can see, we're working with a range of um, public sector partners in this in this area. So we've worked with a lot of local authorities in terms of looking at um, financial model and fees, financial modeling and feasibility um, for solar PV on a lot of local authority owned sites. We're looking offering strategic support for looking at heat network projects involving different buildings um, as well. Um, and we're working, as you can see, with a wide range of different public sector stakeholders. Um, and like I say, a lot of this work is around looking at the solar PV and potential feasibility, but also um, 
opportunities um, to feed in um, to existing funding that's available. So, um, and if you just go into the next slide. Um, so this is just to give it give an example of where a lot of our work at the moment has been focused. So um, there was a summary economic statement from the government um, for different pots of funding that were available. So you had the whole um, two billion pounds under the Green Homes Grant scheme. Um, so one half billion of that is all going to be on, on the voucher scheme. But in, in partnership with that, there's a local authority delivery project, the first phase of which has been delivered by local authorities, um, specifically themselves. And then, as I mentioned earlier, there's going to be another uh, pot of 300 million um, as from that overall pot of 500 million that's going to be administered from the through the energy hubs from next year. We're still waiting for confirmation exactly how that's going to look in terms of how it will be administered. Um, but once we know more about that, that information will be shared with local authorities. Um, and then we have the public sector decarbonisation scheme specifically. Um, so as I mentioned with the, the previous slide, a lot of those projects there, we're working with those authorities to see what the potential is to support some of those projects to apply for this um, scheme. Because there's also the low carbon skills fund that fall under that where authorities can apply to actually have um, detailed surveys done um, to assess the viability of, of, of these projects um, to, to support them. And then if you um, just go to the next slide, please. Um, and just to sort of give an example of that kind of type of project um, or model and approach that we're looking to develop around the support for the public sector decarbonisation scheme in particular. Um, essentially, we're looking to create what's deemed to be shovel ready projects so ones that are just literally ready to go so we're working with um, public sector organizations to identify those project opportunities and there's different sort of mechanisms that the energy hub are using to try and support the deliver to support getting those projects to that stage so as i mentioned earlier we've got that number of software tools um, including something called pv syst for solar pv but also some other tools for um, looking at sort of energy efficiency in general across um, public sector buildings, um, also looking at support around procurement and frameworks and specific um, existing information from site audits that have already been undertaken, um, as well as if on the back of those site audits, the hub being acting as a critical friend to be able to review those and identify what the options will be. And we work very closely with Salix who are administering this fund to try and broker those discussions and conversations with local authorities to ensure that they've got all the information that they can that, that, that they require in order to make a application to this fund. So yeah, I think that covers everything that we um, do. Um, but obviously, if there's any questions or other information required, um, we, we can take those um, shortly. Um, and if there's any other additional information that we're able to provide, or if anybody wants to find out any more, I'm more than happy to provide whatever um, information and links is um, requested. So um, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so um, so. Thank you, of course, to...